Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to solve various examples related to asymptotic notations so that we can strengthen our understanding of asymptotic notation. So let us start. The first example is we have to prove that half n times n minus 1 is theta of n squared. Now the definition of theta says the definition of theta says fn should be less than equals to c2 into gn and greater than equals to c1 into gn for all values of n greater than equals to n naught and c1 and c2 are constants. So first of all let's prove for big O because theta corresponds to both big O as well as omega. So big O represents I am to represent that fn is less than equals to c2 into gn that is this one. Now let's take this is my fn and this is my gn. This entire thing is my fn. Okay, so let's write fn is half n times n minus 1. Let's simplify this further so it becomes half n squared minus half n. Now I need to prove that fn is less than equals to c2 into gn. Let's see how to prove this. So let's write what is fn first. fn is nothing but half n squared minus half n. Now half n squared minus half n is less than equals to, can I write half n squared minus half n is less than equals to half of n squared? Because if you look at this closely, the left hand side, here it's half n squared, here also it's half n squared. The left hand side should always be less than or equals to the right hand side. So in the left hand side, the first term is half n squared. The, the last the first term in right hand side is also half n squared but what I'm doing in left hand side is I'm subtracting half n from half n squared so always the left hand side is having one more term that is I'm subtracting half n from half n squared so left hand term should always be less than the right hand term this is true this is true now this is true but is it true for all values of n let's find it out now in this case the value of c that is the constant that is c2 here is half the value of c2 is half now let's say is it true for n is equals to 0 if n is 0 this becomes 0 is less than equals to 0 is true this is true if n equals to 0 the left hand side becomes 0 right hand side becomes 0 it's true if n is equals to 1 left hand side becomes half minus half is 0 so LHS becomes 0 and RHS becomes half minus half is 0 RHS becomes half so 0 is less than half is true so it's true for all values of n greater than equals to 0 so if you can show that we can show that half n squared minus half n is big O of n squared so this is for big O now let's do for big omega big omega that is I have to show that I have to show this one that is I have to show that fn is greater than equals to c2 into sorry c1 into gn I have to prove that fn is greater than equals to c1 into gn so in this case what is fn fn is nothing but half n squared minus half n half n squared minus half n can you say that half n squared minus half n is greater than equals to half n squared so i have to show that this is more this is more than this right inside so if i want to show that this is more so if i write this if i write this they are equal half n squared minus half n is equals to half n squared minus half n they are equal but if i want to make this this is more than this then may that means i have to subtract now this is the first term here is half n squared the second first term here is half n squared they are same so if i subtract the larger value from right hand side then right hand side will be more less than this one if i subtract the larger if i have half n here if i also multiply half n that means i'm subtracting the larger value that is 1 by 4 n squared value that means this should be always more than this because I am subtracting a larger value here. I am subtracting half 1 by 4 n squared here and here I am subtracting half n. So obviously I am subtracting more value here. 
if I'm subtracting a larger value, that means this should be less. The right hand side should be less than the left hand side, which is what we want, right? So let's say now we can write this as half n squared minus half n is greater than or equals to half n squared minus 1 by 4 n squared. So this is now greater than or equals to if I simplify this becomes uh, 2 n squared minus 1, this becomes half n squared. Isn't it? So let's take the LCM. So LCM becomes 4. So it's 2 n squared minus n squared. So this becomes greater than or equals to 1 by 4 n squared. Right? So it becomes half n squared minus half n equals to n by 4. 1 by 4 n squared here. The value of C that is C1 is 1 by 4. Now let's find the value of n not here. So let's see if the value of n is 0. The LHS becomes LSS becomes half of 0, 0 minus 0, that is 0, and RHS becomes half 1 by 4 of 0 is 0. So this looks to be true for n equals to 0, but as we have fractions here, so let's also try for n equals to 1. For n equals to 1, LHS becomes how much? This is half into 1 is half minus half into 1 is half. So half one is half is zero. So again LHS becomes zero. If I put one here, LHS becomes zero. And the right hand side RHS becomes one by four into one is one by four. Now this is not true, right? In this case, LHS is zero and RHS is zero point something, zero point two five. So this is not true. So after let's try for n equals to two. For n equals to two, LHS is equals to if n equals to two, it becomes 2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 minus, uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So LHS becomes 2 minus 1 is 1 and RHS becomes, RHS becomes 1 by 4 into 2 squared that is 4. So it becomes 1 again. So this is true for n equals to 2. So for all the values greater than equals to n equals to 2, it's true. So this is true for all values of n greater than equals to 2. So here the value of n naught is 2. All right. So we have shown, shown that. Now we have shown that fn is omega of gn. So in this case, what is fn? Let's write fn is half n into n minus 1 is omega of n squared. So if you can show this as well as this. So by the definition of theta, now we have shown that, now let's write it here. Now we have shown that by the definition of theta, we have shown that half n squared minus half n is less than equals to, it's less than equals to how much? It's less than equals to half n squared and greater than equals to, it's greater than equals to, 1 by 4 n squared so this is true now the value of c2 is half and the value of c1 is 1 by 4 and the value of n naught is this will be true for all the values of n in this case the value of n naught is in this case the value of n naught is 2 and in this case the value of n naught is greater than 0 that means 1 so i have to take the higher value so for all the values of n greater than equals 2 2 so n naught should be 2 so if you can show this so this is the definition of definition of theta then we can claim that now we have already shown by the definition of the theta we can claim that fn that is half n into n minus 1 is theta of n squared because we have by the definition we have proved all its properties so it's true so this is how you solve this example this is our second example. In this example, we are supposed to prove that 10 n squared plus 4 n plus 3 is not equals to big O of n. So remember, this is not equals to. So whenever you get a question like this, let's try to prove, prove this by contradiction. So let's assume, first of all, let's assume that, let's assume that 10 n squared plus 4 n plus 3 is equals to big O of n. So we are assuming the contradiction of this, that the opposite of this, that's this one is equals to big O of n. 
So if we assume this by the definition of big O, so by the definition of big O of O, what you can write is that Fn that is the definition is this Fn is less than equals to C into Gn for all values of n greater than equals to and not. So what you can write by this definition is that 10 n squared 4 plus 4 n plus 3 this is Fn is less than equals to let's say some bonds can see into Gn Gn is nothing but n here this is Gn is n so I write n here. So if you look at this inequality what you do next is put all the constants to one side of the inequality let's say let's put all the constant to the right hand side so what you can now do is we can write this as c is greater than or equals to 10 n squared plus 4 n plus 3 divided by n i am placing all the constant to the right so my constant c is here at the right so this becomes now becomes 10 n plus uh, 10 n squared by n is 10 n plus 4 n by n is 4 plus 3 by n is less than or equals to c. Now this can be further written as let's take all the constant to the right. So it can, this can be written as 10 n plus 3 by n is less than or equals to c uh, minus 4. Okay, so this is 10 n plus 3 by n is less than or equals to let's say this is capital C and where capital C is small c minus 4. So if you look at this particular inequality, equation number 1. If you look at this inequality, now whenever we are talking about the time complexity, always the value of n should be very large. So let's say, let n tend to infinity, let n be very large, it is tending to infinity, then what you can say is that in this inequality in 1 what we can say is that LHS because LHS is a function of n right so if you just look at this left hand side that is LHS is how much 10 n plus 3 by n if n tends to infinity this particular value keeps on increasing because it's a linear it's linear to n if n is increased this LHS is will keep on increasing so what we can say is that this uh, LHS keeps increasing it keeps increasing but my RHS my RHS is what RHS is C it's a constant value right so if you keep on changing n RHS is not changed so RHS is constant now what do you mean by this LHS is keep on increasing and RHS is constant so this value is keep on increasing so after some point after maybe some value of n let's say that value is n naught so let's say after n naught after some value of n because this is keep on increasing and this is not changing so obviously after that value this will be always be more than this so in that case after n naught so then you can say that lhs will be greater than or equals to rhs after some value of n that is n naught because this is keep on increasing so lhs will be more than always will be more than the constant c this constant can be anything it can be 5 6 7 8 whatever so after some value this will be more than this always so that means this inequality will not hold good this inequality is not holding good that means one does not hold good that means inequality one this one does not hold good so now if one does not hold good if this does not hold good that must that means our assumption must be wrong yes so we can write that means our assumption is wrong our assumption must be wrong is wrong so what was our assumption this was our assumption if this is wrong then we can say that then if this is wrong that means this should be true if our assumption is wrong then the original statement that was given in the question was must be true so 10 n square plus 4 n plus 3 is not equal to 0 or big O of n is true this is proof by contradiction hence proved so we have recently seen two examples based on asymptotic notations now i want you all to solve 
or find out the solution for these four problems using the concept that is learned that you have learned from this video and in my next video now i'll be starting with the design technique so so far we have we have done all our study on analysis of algorithms now onwards we'll be taking design strategy one by one by one so next lecture of mine would be on divide and conquer strategy which is one of the interesting design techniques so till my next video stay tuned thank you